Welcome to New York's number two sports show. A really, really big win for the Rangers against the Florida Panthers. They win 4-3 in the shootout at Madison Square Garden. And Artemi Panarin does it again. He scores twice, including a game-tying goal with a little less than four minutes to go on the game. And he does get the game-deciding goal in the shootout. Vincent Trocek with three assists. He had a great game against his former team. Adam Fox has just been, uh, you know, doing just yeoman's work lately, especially with all the defensemen that are out. He scores his 14th goal of the season, so continuing on that career high for him. And, yeah, the Rangers were down 2 nothing in this one. They did not get off to a great start. The Panthers were the better team in the first period, but the Rangers were able to battle back, and they had been 0-9 when trailing by at least two goals at home, which was an interesting stat, considering the Rangers are, you know, have one of the most comebacks in the league. I think with this comeback, it was maybe their 22nd, and so they're about, like, third or so in the NHL and comeback win. So as good as Rangers record is, they don't really have the lead as often as you'd think, but just, just great stuff. They, their first 23 games of the season, they were 18, four and one and their last 23 games of the season, they're 18, four and one. And in the middle, they were 11, 12 and two. So through 71 games, Rangers have uh, 98 points, which is just pretty ridiculous. 47, 20 and four. That is first place in the Eastern Conference, not by much, not by a whole lot. Like they're as far as the division, they're three points ahead of Carolina, even games. And, you know, like with Florida, who gets a point tonight, of course, uh, losing in the shootout, they are three points, the Rangers are three points ahead of Florida, and Florida has a game in hand. So things are still close, but these, these are big wins, right? Beating Boston uh, to, to sweep them. Uh, you know, three games in the season series and, and the same fate almost happened to the range against, against Florida. I mean, this this game, you know, um, again, tested the Rangers, but they were able to come through and flying colors. And yeah, so as far as like the president's trophy outlook, Rangers are tied with the Vancouver Canucks. 71 games played, 98 points. But as of now, and this can change with 11 games to go, but Vancouver does have the tiebreaker with one more regulation win, but not going to make a big deal about that. I mean, the president's trophy, like we'll, we'll discuss that. Like as it gets closer, if it's there, but the bigger thing is, you know, where you finish in the conference. And I think there is value to be had for sure to finishing in first in the conference to, and therefore avoiding Tampa in the first round. And also, you know, maintaining home ice because look, the Rangers are a good home team. They're 25 and nine, not to say they can't win on the road, but I think there, there is definite value to be had by finishing in first um, in the conference because it's kind of an, it's somewhat unfair, right? Where like in the first round, it's somewhat more advantageous to finish in second and maybe get the flyers or the capitals as it is to winning the division and landing on the lightning. Not, and not to say the lightning, the Rangers couldn't beat them. I keep on saying that, but I, I think that, um, you know, this was a very big win for many reasons. And it was just nice that, that the Panthers didn't, you know, sweep the Rangers. And the Rangers caught Florida at an interesting time. So the Panthers had lost three straight in regulation, which is the first time they had done so all season. So you knew they were going to be really hungry. With that said, they're also dealing with a lot of injuries, key ones. I mean, Alex Barkov is um, one of their best players for sure. And he's out. Aaron Ekblad's out. I know they're dealing with some other injuries as well. So they're, they're definitely banged up, especially on the back end. And Dmitry Kulikov was serving uh, the second game of his two-game suspension. So that's the other thing as well. So, but still, like, the Rangers are, deserve credit with that all said. Um, you know, and, and to me, in looking at the Eastern Conference, I think Florida is the toughest opponent. There's other good teams in there. You know, like within the division, Carolina is always going to be a test. Um, and, you know, like even though Toronto just can never really seem to get it done, you know, just based on talent alone, they are they can be dangerous. But I think Florida, they just kind of have it all, especially when they're, you know, fully healthy forwards, defense and goaltending. That's a really good team. And they're really good on the road. I mean, they're 24-9-3, and three, like – they 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 don't allow, they just very stout defensively, but also have a lot of talent. So, yeah, hey, put it this way: Rangers Panthers Eastern Conference Final, if it happened, would be really uh, a great one because I really think this Florida team, who you know 
has been a, like they won the president's trophy a, f- a couple years ago. Um, and then last year had an unexpected run to the finals. So like they've kind of been through it all. Um, you know, even though you may not think of the Florida Panthers that way, but they've been, you know, definitely in the mix and in the hunt in recent years. And so has this Ranger team, you know, w- w- with their Eastern Conference final appearance a couple of years ago. And these th- this Ranger team, it's battle tested of nothing else. A lot of these players have, you know, have whether on the Rangers or on different teams, right? Uh, have, you know, definitely um, had experience. And hopefully Peter Lavulette is the one to kind of guide them in the right direction. So a very interesting lineup decision was made in this game, one that I don't really agree with. Will Cooley was a healthy scratch, which is interesting for a few reasons. And he was actually one of six players that had played all 70 games. So that's tough too, right? Like he's a rookie and I'm sure that hurt him, especially in a bit. And here's the thing too, it was a big game against Florida and the Rangers were coming off of a win. And I think Cooley has probably hit, at times I've talked about it, a little bit of a rookie wall, but it's but he still had his good moments mixed in. I think really what it was is, like, they want to keep Rampy in the lineup as much as they can, and I think that they do value Brodzinski. And to be fair to him in that Islander game, that Brodzinski with uh, Wenberg and Kako was a good line, but I still think this team is better with Will Cooley in the lineup Look, if you want to give him a little bit of a rest, I can kind of understand that, but but ultimately not really because, like, again, it's this is a big game against the Panthers. So I'm sure it, it had to have ticked him off just a little bit because it's not like his play was worthy of being taken out. Um, it, you know, look, they end up winning the game. I think the Cooley will be in next game. I'd be pretty surprised if not. And the guy who's taken out probably would be Brodzinski. I, I think that... Um, but but it seems like the way Laviolette's talking is that the three of them will one you know assuming that the forwards are healthy that one of those three Cooley Brodzinski and Rempe one of them will sit fair or not um, and then on the on the defensive side it was you know the same but you know of note Eric Gustafson who when you think about it like he's played he he's only missed one game this season he's definitely playing. Probably like a lot. I mean, just in terms of the responsibilities, even though he's a veteran and, and I think one, you know, who's probably played close to, I mean, I'd have to check, but someone that you know, he's used to playing like, you know, full seasons, but he, uh, he took a pretty nasty hit, um, you know, just an, you know, an, an ugly looking hit. Uh, I didn't think it was dirty. Like Sam Reinhart was kind of battling for position and it kind of, Laviolette wasn't thrilled about it. I, I guess part of it is I don't really see Reinhardt as a dirty player, um, but it ends up being a situation where like he elbows Gustafson like kind of into the board. So we'll have to see what his status is uh, heading into next game, right? There's, it, it was too late in the game to really have a good read on it. If he is out, that would mean that Brandon Scanlon would make his NHL debut against the Flyers on Tuesday, but... Maybe Gustafson comes out of it okay, but you get worried about that when it's a head injury, which I think it was because he kind of did go down awkwardly, you know, from a lower body sense. But I think the concern based on what it sounds like is more of a, an upper body thing. So I uh, hope, you know, as, as much as I think that Gustafson could probably use a little bit of a break, I, I do think he has been uh, struggling a little bit lately. Uh, and, and I think that honestly, it could just be fatigue in some ways. So Hope he's okay for sure, considering that the Rangers uh, defensemen have been pretty beat up. But you know, they uh, they they're definitely making it work regardless. So Panthers Rangers, this was you know a lot on the line. I, I think you know this definitely had a bit of a playoff feel to it. And the Panthers were definitely the better team in the first period, no question about it. You know, the shots on goal were 11-8 Florida, but I I thought that they were even better than that. I mean, the Rangers in some ways were kind of lucky to only, you know, leave the first period uh, down one nothing, And, you know, at 4-0-3, Gustafson slashes uh, Sam Reinhart. But luckily, the Ranger penalty kill does the job. And, and I really think they've done a really, really good job for a while now. Um, and that's going to be key going in the playoffs. So they kill that off. But... At 818, Matthew Kachuk scores his 23rd goal of the season from Mahora and Verhage. So it was a shot by Mahora from the point. And Kachuk kind of just 
you know, left alone right in front of Igor with an easy deflection, easy tip in. And that's the last guy, you know, he's one of the better players in the game at that. So um, I'm not really sure what was going on there. It was the Zibanejad line was on as well as Miller and Schneider. And while I'm, um, while I guess, while I've brought those players up, you know, the Zibanejad line, like, wasn't great. I just feel like overall there's a lot more to, to give for all of them in, in different ways. Like Mika, who we'll talk, look, we'll give him, we'll give him his praise. He really had a sick shootout goal. Really, really. It was a Forsberg move. But, you know, I think Mika just has not been quite right. Same with Kreider. Like, you know, I, I think that all the fans can see it, right? Like, there's a noticeable difference. That Panarin Trocheck line, it's just buzzing all the time. And maybe it's not a fair comparison. And, and as I've said, I, I do praise the defensive work that Meek and Kreider ultimately do, even though there's some flaws there, right? And, and I guess really with Kreider sometimes, it just feels like he's not all the way dialed in. But they've done a good job there. Jack Roslovic, I thought, had a really rough game. A lot, I mean, and, and I've talked about this. I, I think that acquiring him makes the Rangers better. But I, I think that defensively, he's got to tighten up. There's a lot of turnovers to his game. And, you know, I, I just didn't think he had a great game, Roslovic. But am I asking for them to change lines? Absolutely not. I think that based on the personnel, that's where he fits best. But, you know, it, it was just it, – it was not the best. And then as far as like the Miller-Schneider pair, I, I thought Keandre Miller was really, really strong. I, I did think that Braden Schneider um, didn't have the best of games, and, and he's entitled to that. He's been really good. Like, he, you know, he played 20 minutes. But I, I thought Schneider made some mistakes, if, if we're being fair. Um, and so, yeah, Florida takes that one nothing lead. And then the Rangers get a power play at um, 1346. ekman Larson trips uh, Vincent Trocek. So, but, you know, Rangers don't score in that power play. So you lead the first period with Florida up one nothing, not really feeling too great about the game. However, um, in the second period, it actually gets worse in the second to start. Uh, 21 seconds in, Luce Duranen scores his 12th goal of the season from Reinhardt and Balanskis. And, um, yeah, this was just a bad play. Uh, really, like, Gustafson kind of, sort of pinches and it ends up in a kind of a three on one, at least a two on one. I think it might've been a three on one and Reinhardt is able to get it past Fox and Listerine and scores past just Sterkin. So um, yeah, two nothing Panthers at that point. And it's, you know, you can't have that happen, you know, to start the period, but luckily for the Rangers, they are able to get a power play at five sixteen. Agpozo holds Adam Fox. And not only did Fox draw the penalty, but he actually scores the goal on the power play. Fox gets his 14th goal of the season from Trocek and Zibanejad. So, like I've been saying, Fox, you know, I'm, I like that he's shooting the puck. He'll never have a great slap shot. That's not his game. But the wrist shot is accurate, and he's a smart player. So he kind of just knows when to snap it. And that's what he does there. And, and, and Bobrowski, I'm not – there might have been a screen there. I'm not really sure if he got a good look on it, but just a nice goal – and that was a big one, right? If Florida makes it 3 nothing, then good chance this game's over, especially when you consider the stat I talked about where the Rangers are 0-9 at home when trailing by at least two goals. So they make it 2-1, and then the momentum starts to build. Uh, the, the fourth line had a nice shift, and then Panarin scores. To tie it up at 2 at 8-23, Panarin is 42nd goal of the season from Trocek and Fox, and it was a nice turnover. That's the thing. like That line with Fox, like there's so many turnovers as well that they cause. And it was a nice play by Trocek showing a little bit of patience and then just finding Panarin and Panarin, no hesitation. I just love when Panarin's in a, in a shoot first mode and just an awesome, awesome shot, you know, uh, past his buddy Bobrovsky. That is, if he has that attitude in the playoffs, he will be a lot more successful. So that makes it 2-2. And then the Rangers kept on going at 9.26 for Hagee slashes Kako. And that power play had good zone time, but didn't really get that many opportunities uh, considering the zone time. So it stays 2-2. Two, two. 
Then I would say by the end, and this is a good period for the Rangers. At 11.44, Goodrow is called for roughing Matthew Kachuk. Not a smart penalty by Barkley Goodrow, and it's just frustrating. Like, he, he's a top penalty kill guy. Like, you, you can't be taking penalties like that, but the Rangers do kill it off. And I thought it was a good period by the Rangers, but the Panthers, by the end of the second, were picking it up. But you leave the second period tied 2-2. And that was the same score of the Panthers-Rangers game on March 4th. It was 2-2 at the end of the two. I, I want to see what it was on December 29th in Florida. Um, so that was – so that almost was 2-2 as well. In, in that game in Florida, um, the Panthers actually took a 3-2 lead um, with three minutes left in the second. And the Rangers actually tied it up in the third only for, for – actually Verhage was the one who gave, who actually got the game-winning goal for Florida. So – History almost repeated itself here with Verhage, who just gets such big goals for the Panthers. I mean, he is very good. Um, and the third period, I thought the Rangers played really well. Really, really well. Like, maybe the first couple minutes, not so much. But then after that, like, I think the shot attempts at one point were 17-2 Rangers. They really were the better team by far. And the shots on goal in the third were 10-3 Rangers. But... Florida takes the lead with a little more than four minutes left in the third. Verhage scores his 31st from Montour and Kachuk. And what happens here is they come close to getting the puck out of the zone. Wember, Kako was in the vicinity. Wember was probably a little bit closer. And Wember, in his attempt to try to poke it out, he loses. I'm not sure if his stick broke or he just lost control of his stick. And, you know, so then he goes to the bench to grab one. It kind of puts him in a little bit of, a, of an odd man situation. But regardless of that, Verhage just wires one um, over the glove of, I guess, glove side of Shesterkin. If there's one that Igor would like to have back, it's that one. Although it really was a really good shot by Verhage. Makes it 3-2. But the Rangers do what they've done basically all season long. We saw it last game when Boston tied it up and then Fox scored like a minute later or whatever it was. Well, that kind of happens here. So less than a minute after, it's 16:35. Panarin scores again. Second of the night, 43rd goal of the season, assists to Zach Jones and Vincent Trocek. So Trocek with three assists. Um, and Zach Jones, I just think, has been playing really well. I, I, I actually think he should, probably deserves some, some run in, in the three-on-three overtime. I think his skill set would have been good there, right? Like instead of Gustafson, maybe go Zach Jones. And there's maybe some other guys you could have included. But I think, you know, I thought he deserved that. But I understand why they didn't. But, but Panarin takes the shot. And... It goes off of former Ranger Nico Mikola's leg. Um, you know, he was battling. And that's the thing. Trocek and Lafreniere were both in front of Bobrovsky. Uh, so the whole line deserves credit. And so it goes off of Mikola. And then it goes off of um, his defensive partner. Um, and I forget who it was. Um, I'm not sure who he was with. Maybe Ekman Larson. Not 100% sure there, but it ends up being Panarin's goal. A huge goal to tie it up before you get into any empty net scenarios. So, yeah, 3-3. Three, three. And then there were some other opportunities at the end of regulation as well, but it goes to overtime. And the 3-3 three and three overtime, Florida definitely had possession for the most part. There was one golden chance, uh, a two-on-one between Zibanejad and Kreider, and Bobrovsky robs Kreider. Just unfortunate, right? Like, that would have been nice for those two. To combine for a goal, um, not to say that they haven't had some big goals this season, but it was kind of open for that. Doesn't happen, and they go to a shootout. And the Rangers were the Rangers haven't been in that many shootouts. Neither has Florida. Florida was two and one in the shootout, and the Rangers were one and three. Both teams excelled in the three on three. Rangers more so. They were they were seven and one in the three on three. But Rangers decided to, to shoot first. I, I, that seems to be the way with Laviolette. The Rangers have really only had like I think this was only their maybe second home shootout. At most three, but I think it was only two. And Zibanejad goes first, which I'm trying to remember if that's been the case. I feel like Panarin, I feel like it's been more Panarin one, Zibanejad two. Not 100% sure. Either way, Mika makes a great move. Um, you know, just normally he goes for that shot, that forehand shot, but he actually, he fakes Bobrovsky out and just barely is able to slide it by him on the backhand with kind of one hand on a stick. A beautiful, like, you know, kind of that Peter Forsberg goal uh, to make it one nothing Rangers. But then Sam Reinhart, like who didn't score, in, didn't score in regulation, you know, didn't score in overtime, but was to be heard from in the shootout. He scores tied up at one, and then Artemi Panarin just showing some patience. Um, you know, he always it always kind of toes the line because he, 
you know, if you go back, right, if you kind of lose the momentum, the forward momentum and go back, like they can call that off. But he always is able to kind of just stay, you know, forward enough and scores to give the Rangers a 2-1 lead in the shootout. Then Anton Lundell is stopped by Igor. Then they go with Trocek third. And I have no real problem with that. I mean, it would have either been Lafreniere or Trocek. They go with Trocek, who had a three-assist night, former Panther. But Bobrovsky stops him. So it comes down to Tar- Vladimir Tarasenko, who is now a Florida Panther, former Ranger, and I'm sure Tarasenko and Shesterkin are probably uh, somewhat close, you know, uh, him being on the team last year and uh, being from the same country. And uh, I-, I thought for sure Tarasenko was going to tie it up, but it didn't happen. He doesn't score, and the Rangers find a way to win in the shootout. The final score is 4-3, and, uh, you know, definitely a big win for the Rangers. So now, finally... They get a couple of days off. That has not happened for a while. And it, and and really, once the Flyer game, as I'd said previously, once they have that Flyer game, it'll be um, every other day where there's a game for the rest of the season. Um, so, you know, no back-to-backs and no two days off in between, just one in between each game. And, you know, it'll be interesting. The, the Flyers actually play the Panthers tomorrow in Philly. Uh, and for Philly, like, they are right on that – Borderline, you know, right now they're kind of holding on to that third metropolitan spot uh, in the division. So Rangers beat them twice this season so far. The Rangers won twice in Philly. They haven't played them at home yet. So they, they play Philly a couple more times. But um, Rangers really only really difficult game the rest of the way is the game after Philly, which is at Colorado, who's been playing really, really well. Uh, so that'll be a good test. And then the April schedule, it's a lot of. It's a lot at home, and it's a lot of divisional games. So it'll be, you know, interesting to see what happens. But, yeah, the Rangers, if they can kind of survive, like, you know, home against Philly at Colorado, if they can kind of, you know, find a way to get some points there, there's every reason to believe that they can win this division, that they can maybe win the conference. Like, the the possibilities are kind of endless, but yet there's still 11 games to go. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But... You know, after a tough loss to Winnipeg, they bounce back with a big win at Boston and an even bigger win home against Florida. They win in the shootout 4-3.